I tried my best to get outside today, but since that's not happening, we'll make the best of it and review every golf game on the Sega Genesis. I'll talk about each one in no particular order and show some gameplay. At the end of the video, we'll give each game an overall ranking to see which game is the best and which game is the worst. We'll kick things off with the most popular golf series of all time, PGA Tour Golf. The latest PGA game is PGA Tour 2K21, but we're going back to where it all started with PGA Tour Golf on the Sega Genesis. PGA Tour Golf was developed by Sterling Silver Software and published by EA in 1991. For such an early entry in the golf genre of games, I'd have to say right off the bat that this game is solid overall both graphically and in the gameplay department. It's really a matter of how much work the development and design teams put into the little things like screen layout, color, and animation that sets one golf game apart from the other. PGA Tour Golf is easy to get into for entry level players with an intuitive screen layout showing club distance, yardage to hole, wind direction, along with selecting your club for you automatically based on distance and ball lie. Being an earlier title, PGA Tour Golf only has four courses to choose from and has that awesome 90s PC color palette. Overall, I thought this game was presented above average in the transition screens and character animation was fair. The power bar makes sense and is easy to use overall. Putting is something that is either done well or not done well at all in early golf games like this, but I'd say the putting works in this one. They lay out the grid before your putt and the power bar makes sense according to distance from the hole. The sound and music certainly show their age, but I mean, look at the clubhouse. I think that makes up for anything below average in the game, right? If you don't want to hit the course right away, you can also practice your skills at both the driving range and the practice green. Next up, we have PGA Tour Golf 2. It's not a drastic change from the first PGA Tour Golf game, but it clearly starts with the best part being the clubhouse pixel art. And if you missed it, the audio was done by L. Ron Hubbard. Nah, it was actually done by Rob Hubbard. Developed by Polygames and published by EA in 1992. The first notable difference in PGA Tour Golf 2 is the addition of the draw and fade meter, along with the music and graphics. They've done a slightly better job in both departments on this one, including a more updated graphic style and color palette. PGA Tour Golf 2 features 7 courses as opposed to 4, with the addition of Southwind, Eagle Trace, and Sterling Shores. The character animation is nearly unchanged, and everything that was on screen in the first game is here as well. Power bar is unchanged, and putting is identical in this title. If you want to brush up on your shots, both the driving range and practice screen are here again for you anytime you'd like to use them. PGA European Tour was the next to be released. It was developed by Polygames and published by EA in March of 1994. Probably had to wait that extra year because they were working hard on both Race Driving and Sonic Spinball. And even with the wait we got the exact engine they used for PGA Tour Golf 2 and only 5 courses including Wentworth, Forest of Arden, Cran Cerciere, Le Golf National, and Valderrama. 
But who cares about the courses when you have that sweet new clubhouse pixel art? The only gameplay difference is the fact that you don't get a grid for putting. I think you can find one in the menus, but I just went for it. Automatic instant replay on decent shots was a cool touch. Driving range and practice screen, you got them. Two more PGA titles and we'll get into a couple Genesis golf games you've likely not heard of before. PGA Tour Golf 3 was developed by Polygames and published by EA in December of 1994. Nothing gets worse in this title and the music and sound clips were definitely a step up. The pixel art in PGA Tour Golf 3 is beautiful and I feel the color palette and graphics beat out PGA Tour Golf 2 by a little bit. Most notable difference in this title being the digitized character animation, they look great. PGA Tour Golf 3 features 8 courses, they took out Eagle Trace and added La Colinas and River Highlands. Sadly, PGA European Tour had the last installment of the clubhouse screen. But the driving range and practice screen are here to stay. Last in the PGA series to be released was PGA Tour 96 in, you guessed it, 1995? Developed by New Effects and published by EA, PGA Tour 96 had comparable digitized characters as PGA Tour 3, but the courses definitely looked better, although at the cost of waiting for the graphics to load in every shot, which they referred to on the back of the case as new 3D gameplay. The power bar in this one changes from the traditional horizontal bar to the more modern curved vertical bar. PGA Tour 96 had some great music and sound effects for sure, but it also only had three courses, River Highlands, Sawgrass, and Spyglass Hill. Driving range or practice screen, anyone? Next, we'll mix it up a bit and take a look at Zany Golf. This was a mini putt style golf game that reminded me of Sierra's 3D Ultra Mini Golf, but in a much slower, consoleized version. Zany Golf was developed by Sandcastle Productions and published by EA in 1990. There are a variety of cool holes to play through, most with small gimmicks such as repeatedly pressing A to make a burger jump. Super slow frame rate, but the whole game is here and it is playable, so you can be the judge on gameplay and fun factor. I believe it's just one 18 hole course, but I don't think you'll play it through on your first try. Easy to pick up and play, select the button you want to use to start and release your shot, aim your shot line, and putt. You probably won't play Zany Golf for the music, as I found it fairly annoying after a while, but the gameplay is okay. No clubhouse, driving range, or practice screen will be found in this one.
Chi Chi's Pro Challenge Golf was developed by Soft Machine and published by Virgin Games in 1993. Featuring the star of the game and pro golfer Juan Chi Chi Rodriguez. This game has the best music I'd say so far out of the games I've talked about with the Japanese arcade style vibe. Reminding me of one of my favorite golf series, Hot Shots Golf. I love the graphical presentation, vibrant colors, and watching the clouds fly by. The power bar in this game is similar to PGA Tour 96, but it starts from bottom to top. Arcade style gameplay compared to the PGA series with some fun touches, like the character reaction after each shot. The wind and spin on the ball seem to do a little too much based on what you see on screen, but that's probably my only gripe with this one. It's solid overall. How could you not love this cast of characters, right? But even this cast can't make up for the lack of a clubhouse, a driving range, or practice screen. Or the fact that there's only one playable course featuring the Virgin Open. World Class Leaderboard Golf was developed by Tiertex and published by US Gold in 1992. I was looking forward to this one first time playing it as the presentation and graphics for the intro segment were neat and upon teeing up for the first hole I thought they did a great job with the overall look of the game. Little things like the scrolling cloud backgrounds or the 3D map of the course that plays in real time when you hit your ball were nice additions. I really tried to give this one a shot for hours, but the speed of the power bar is very hard to get used to. You can change the scroll speed upon reading the instructions, but I play and review every game I've ever played based on the initial game settings. Music and sound effects are up there for golf games on the Genesis, and I did enjoy the opening music track. Also, the putting took me some getting used to. You get a bar that shows green slope height via how tall the pole is and shows slope direction with the black line. Even after reading this in the instruction manual, the putting is still very difficult. Oh, and lastly, you'll have to select your club each shot and even if you want to use the caddy tip, it won't help you that much. There is only one course to play, but there is also a driving range and a practice screen. And although it might not be for entry level players, this game is good overall, even with the super fast power bar and putting that takes some getting used to. Pebble Beach Golf Links was developed by t and &E Soft and published by Sega in 1994. t and &E Soft does a remarkable job on presentation and audio in most of their titles, and Pebble Beach Golf Links is no exception. This has the best sound effects and music of any golf game I will discuss today, with new tracks for each hole and sound effects in more areas of gameplay. Also, the layout of the screen is bar none. Features like a scrolling camera for each shot to make this title feel complete. And hey, if you want to scan the T-Deck just to make sure it's flat, you can. Great golf game, but no driving range or practice screen. I guess even T and Esoft can't get everything right every time.
Jack Nicklaus Power Challenge Golf was developed by Microsmiths and published by Accolade in 1993. The music in this one have an island vibe and remind me of something from Green Dog. You have a very limited character customization screen with three types of digitized characters to choose from and one course to play featuring the Nicholas Open. This one is up there with the better looking golf games on the Genesis and I love the fact that you can see the flag moving in the wind from a distance. Back to the classic horizontal bar in this title and a clean, simple layout on screen during gameplay. Maybe not the flashiest layout, but gameplay is there for sure. This was a fun one. No clubhouse, but Jack Nicholas does give you permission to use both his driving range and his practice screen. Arnold Palmer Tournament Golf was developed and published by Sega in 1989, making it the earliest golf game on the Sega Genesis. Although it's the earliest title, it still looks and plays great to this day. The sound effects are solid and music is upbeat and works well with the gameplay speed. Vibrant colors on a simple layout with some unique character graphics. Only one course to play in this one, but you may be able to play more if you beat the first tournament, I'm not too sure. Arnold Palmer Tournament Golf uses a vertical power bar, which I find doesn't work quite as well as the horizontal bar, but it's fine. I do like the whole map on the left side of the screen that shows your ball as it travels. Also, if you get bored, try shooting 99 times on one hole and see what happens. You're greeted to a built-in version of the Sega Classic Fantasy Zone. Enjoy! Now it's time to rank these games. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. I post videos every Friday, and I hope to see you back here.